Hello everybody from Plant Reviews UK, today is the 27th of April and I am today potting up a, a Cypripedium uh, Calciolus uh, it is this one actually of my favorite orchid, this is a slipper orchid uh, and is a cold hardy slipper orchid, it is uh, distributed in uh, many countries in Europe including the United Kingdom uh, but uh, uh, it has been um, then it's, it's a quite uh, endangered species in the wild at some point there was only one individual in the United Kingdom because the flowers were so beautiful they were taken for uh, garden uh, purposes but uh, um, obviously is not this uh, wild orchids and back a few years ago not many people knew how to um, take care of the sleeper orchids uh, so uh, in the end uh, it actually got extinct uh, to throw out most of the UK and at some point as I said only one uh, individual was uh, found in the United Kingdom and was basically guarded almost 24 hours a day to avoid uh, the loss of this last individual. Uh, luckily it is uh, uh, like many other orchids has been possible to uh, breed it in uh, captivity and now it is uh, actually uh, one of the uh, most popular garden orchids thank any, thanks anyway to captive breeding all the uh, plants uh, that uh, belong to this species for garden uh, um, uh, purposes that are traded for the uh, market in uh, as ornamental plants they come all for captive breeding uh, programs and uh, therefore there's no need anymore to uh, take specimens in the wild uh, Cypripediums uh, grow in uh, in the wild, usually in very well drained soil, uh, in woodlands, uh, in uh, usually in partial shade, and uh, with um, in areas with a lot of leaf litter and uh, often uh, pine um, in pine woodlands. So environments rich of pine needles, so quite acidic, and this is true for uh, many species of the genus Cypripedium. Cypripedium calceolus is just one species in quite a, a big genus uh, of orchids uh, indeed of the genus Cypripediums that uh, most of which are anyway uh, distributed in temperate climates. Uh, Cypripedium calceolus is perfectly hardy in the UK. Uh, most of the Cypripediums are uh, hard because obviously Cypripedium calceolus is a species native in the United Kingdom as well as in many other countries in Europe. Uh, however, uh, there are a lot of other Cypripediums hardy in the United Kingdom as well as in many other temperate and also cold countries. Some Cypripediums are also distributed in Canada and Alaska and uh, many of them can stand the temperatures in winter at minus 20 degrees Celsius. So they're really used to cold. They don't really fare well in very hot uh, summers and very dry, especially during the growth period. They need moisture. Uh, and uh, still in well-drained soil, they don't really like uh, water logging at all. Uh, some people had problems in um, cultivating these plants in organic media. Uh, most of organic media used for these uh, cultivating these plants uh, are bark chips or sphagnum moss uh, or uh, uh, different kinds of compost, loam. Uh, for example, um, definitely uh, well-drained soil. However, uh, I found that most of the um, most of the uh, people cultivated cypripediums had great results using uh, instead inorganic inorganic mediums. This is because organic mediums at some point rot away. They rot and uh, the uh, compost basically is deteriorated and needs to be replaced. Instead, with inorganic mediums, uh, the um, uh, substrate uh, doesn't rot away. So, uh, considering that Cypripedium, like many plants, uh, don't really like to be replanted and every root disturbed, it's better to. Um, many, yeah, many people found a be lot better cultivating uh, Cypripediums in uh, inorganic media and actually myself have uh, been cultivating since last year some species of Cypripedium in this mix uh, I found uh, on a forum of the uh, Scottish Rock Garden Centre uh, and uh, I had very uh, good results uh, I can show you uh, at the end of the video uh, my Cypripediums growing in the same mixture so basically this mixture uh, obviously to r plant a Cypripedium you need first of all a Cypripedium plant in my case Cypripedium calceolus I bought it from rareplants.co.uk it was on sale in this period and uh, being one of my favorite species uh, is usually quite expensive but I thought uh, it was uh, a nice uh, 
purchase considering it was on sale and also uh, on the website was advertised that very nicely sized the plant and uh, they were uh, discontinuing the sale of Cypripedium calceolus this year so I thought well I'll have a try with my one of my favorite orchid species uh, the mixture that I found uh, many people uh, have uh, different have uh, good results uh, including me uh, with uh, my Cypripediums it's a very simple mixture of uh, uh, inorganic medium that is uh, uh, basically 50% um, perlite, very well draining and uh, it uh, uh, consistently can give moisture without obviously uh, making the um, compost the substrate but water logged. Uh, then uh, quite weirdly uh, cut litter, uh, this is uh, uh, another uh, inorganic substrate that uh, um, keeps the soil very well drained and um, ensure that actually is uh, um, soft so the roots and the uh, um, plant when it sprouts doesn't uh, don't have any problem uh, in uh, with a hard soil to get through it is very important that the uh, cat litter is uh, um, non clump uh, non clumping uh, otherwise obviously when you water the plants uh, the uh, the cat litter will clump and will uh, solidify, making obviously the substrate terrible for the cypripediums. So it is very important that to use non clumping cat litter. Uh, both uh, cat litter and perlite are very, very, very um, liked uh, substrates. Uh, so it is, uh, uh, they usually tend to float when you water them. And also, uh, if uh, there is a lot of wind they can actually blow away both the cat litter and the perlite so what I use on top of this mix is just normal grit uh, actually lime free grit because uh, most cypripediums anyway don't really like uh, don't really like uh, limestone in the uh, substrate so I use this lime free uh, granite angular grit uh, on top uh, about three four centimeters because in this way it keeps uh, this substrate uh, um, firm obviously the grit is quite uh, heavy and still it is uh, 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 well draining and quite light so the plant can actually sprout through can uh, get through easily uh, however being uh, the uh, cluster of the uh, grit heavy uh, is not blow the substrate below so uh, cut litter and uh, perlite is not blown by the wind and I never had any problem using this mixture with uh, my other cyclones so let's start with the potting I have uh, different sides of pots I have a pretty small one a medium one and a big one I will see really uh, what the, is the size of the uh, of these cypripediums that I have at the moment and then decide the size the best size for the orchid accordingly ideally you should not really um, use very small pots uh, for cypripediums because uh, uh, in the year uh, they tend to do quite uh, a lot of clump forming uh, the clump yeah, it can actually form quite big clumps so uh, you should go usually for like uh, medium sized pots anyway obviously depends by the plant uh, and uh, I will see uh, how the sides of the uh, of the plant So, uh, well, as instruction says, uh, the rhizome should be put uh, about uh, um, four or five centimeters uh, um, with the rhizome planted horizontally and root spreads out. So depth above rhizome approximate uh, four or five centimeters. So I need to put the rhizome four or five centimeters deep in the substrate. With the rhizome planted horizontally, the root spread out. Uh, there should be one centimeters below compost level. Uh, you must reach loam soil as it is a traditional uh, uh, substrate for um, cypripedium with plenty of porous drainage material incorporated in part or double shady situation uh, lime or acid soil is suitable to not extreme of either pH so I just have to go obviously for an environment for obviously neutral 
substrate, uh, even if uh, many cypripediums actually like acidic soil. Uh, resins transplanting, so do not try to restore buffer planting, will frequently not flower the first season after transplanting, but thereafter will slowly clump up if not disturbed. disturbed. What we call hardy in normal uh, United Kingdom temperature. Uh, this is uh, quite obvious because it's a native, uh, it's a plant native to the United Kingdom as well as in many other countries in Europe, including Scandinavia, that is a lot colder. So let's uh, open the bag. The Cypripium calciolus is a beautiful slipper orchid. It has uh, uh, um, flowers uh, that uh, are uh, maroon, dark red maroon, on uh, the uh, two tepals and uh, um, yeah, on the main tepals of the uh, flower, uh, and uh, like a, a greenish yellow uh, slipper that is uh, the uh, lip of the orchid. It is a really, really beautiful orchid. So I am opening now delicately. The plant, so well, I can already see that is actually indeed a very, very nicely sized plant indeed. So I am just taking out this compost. So you can see it has a very nice, well developed roots and uh, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, ten shoots. So yes, thank you rare plants, it is actually a very nicely sized plant. So really looking forward to uh, planting this beautiful uh, specimen. So considering that uh, the plant uh, it is uh, not uh, really uh, big, uh, but not small either, uh, probably actually can um, I would probably put it in the middle uh, it looks like a really big pot for it but uh, I really wouldn't like to disturb the plant in the next uh, few years also as I said I'm using completely inorganic media I don't really uh, mind to, uh, I don't really need to change the substrate uh, that often. So uh, uh, what I will do is just uh, use this spot for the Cypripedium um, Calceolus. So what I will do now is, well opening obviously the bag of cat litter. So yeah, using my keys, <laughs> they are always really good in doing the job. my fingers were actually even better. So cat litter is open, you can see it is a very porous, uh, very very porous uh, medium. So what I will do is basically um, put enough cat litter and perlite uh, about 50 centi yeah 50 percent of each uh, at some point may, they might actually perlite and um, uh, cut litter they might get through the holes so i will need to uh, press a little bit in order not to make uh, this uh, um, happening or even better putting some uh, uh, plastic sheet
You can actually put stones on uh, the uh, bottom and uh, uh, actually is probably what should I do. So I bring some stones, hopefully I have some. And yes, I do have some stones indeed, so with the stones I will just cover the holes, the drainage hole on the bottom. continuing to use the stones uh, on the bottom I'm trying to show you how it looks like So yeah, just put some stones on the bottom to avoid uh, or some pieces of plastic for example, uh, like for example this uh, old uh, um, plastic bulb is not very ornamental but actually has a drainage hole so you can actually put on the bottom as well and will ensure some drainage too. bulb uh, plastic is perfect because uh, yeah, when uh, the bulbs are put in plastic they uh, need to be ensure some ventilation some region so they are always uh, with holes So, uh, this is done. As you can see, I have a, a pot with now some uh, plastic, uh, basically, yeah, um, perforated uh, plastic bulb, uh, yeah, bulb plastic, sorry, bulb for enclosing, uh, bulb, uh, yeah, uh, plastic for enclosing bulbs uh, that with ventilation holes as well as stones to keep it down. Then, what I will do is putting half uh, um, of perlite and half uh, uh, cat litter so I start with the cat litter ensure to be in a ventilated area so outside because as you can see this uh, substrate is actually very 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 uh, dusty so it's not good for your lungs if you do it indoors take some perlite as well
you can just uh, basically doesn't need to be 50 percent uh, uh, precisely per gram you can do anyway um, you can judge yourself by eye So I am obviously mixing the compost. Try to be on the side, if there is a bit windy like the here, like today, try to be obviously on the side with no wind. Like the where the wind blows out. That mix again pretty well. And remember to water the um, mixture because it's very dusty, so you don't want the orchid. Uh, So I'm obviously now washing the mixture. And letting it drain. You can actually see now the difference between uh, uh, perlite and cat litter. The uh, cat litter is like greyish while the perlite is pure white. Okay, so this is pretty uh, cool. Yeah, pretty good. We continue to dose uh, the, um, the perlite because I think, or actually, you know what, I think that it is already at a good point. So what I will do to spread around the roots is uh, doing a small, uh, a small mold, like a, a little bit sopra elevated area, like a little bit um, protruding area where I can sit the plant on top and spread the roots around. So hopefully you can see the protrusion, uh, in this case, uh, hopefully you see this kind of small, uh, yeah, this kind of uh, small mountain on the, uh, in the center. So I'm putting the orchid here. I'm trying to move, okay, perfect. So, so you have to spread around the roots of the plant and do it this way. You have to be very careful not to damage the roots. Okay, seems perfectly done. So I will prepare here 
here the rest of the uh, potting mix to slowly uh, pot put on top of the plant. So. This material is very good because they retain moisture but uh, uh, basically uh, do not make the uh, soil waterlogged so just mix it Add it to my pot. Vermiculite and the flicker.
Okay, so basically the pot is done. You can see that uh, the shoots of the orchid are basically on top of the soil. And now I'm putting some uh, I'm putting some grit to keep the uh, pot uh, to keep the pot um, substrate. So the perlite and the uh, cut it in place even if it will be. Uh, also uh, another good point of the grit is that uh, it, it dries up uh, quickly so it usually discourages slugs and snail to eat the, the uh, young shoots of the cypripediums they are quite fond of the leaves and of the young shoots of the cypripediums, cypripediums as well as of the flowers unfortunately So you need to evenly distribute the grit on top. I don't think it would be uh, three, four centimeters, probably would be two centimeters, uh, but uh, it should do the job anyway. Okay, so that's done my uh, Cypripedium repotting, so what I will do is just put a label to not forget that this plant is a Cypripedium and I want to show you in the end the Cypripediums have been growing since last year in this new, um, in this uh, new, well not new but uh, this mis the mixture I found on uh, the forum of the um, Scottish Rock Garden Centre and here here they are, uh, you can see uh, that already, unfortunately, some grit has uh, come out and uh, you can actually see the vermiculite uh, and the cut litter on the bottom, but I have to say that, uh, as you can see here, they are growing really, really well. You can see in this Cypripedium that has been growing in the same uh, mixture, it is already also start producing the flowers 